Any questions? Anyone else? Feel free. What does a sheikh see in his murid that pulls his pleasure, pulls a sheikh's pleasure? When he sees that murid fighting with his ego. Serving like this or like that? Hmm. I understand when our sheikh says, be here for the sake of Allah. Don't come here for my sake. He's saying, do things for the sake of Allah. Don't do things for my sake. If you do things for my sake, I'm never going to be pleased, he's saying. Make your Lord to be pleased. Don't make me to be pleased. What is the meaning? Is Shah Effendi saying that although Allah is pleased with you, he's not going to be pleased? No, that's why idiots have no understanding. And he's saying that. He's saying what it means is that I'm never going to be pleased with whatever that you're doing because I want you to go higher. Because you can always do better. Because every time I'm saying, no, you can always do better, your station is going to rise and it's endless stations to reach to your Lord. Now the Shah sees you fighting against your ego and winning. Yeah, he's seeing that you're trustworthy. You're serving. Everyone is serving, like this or like that, as much as they can. Understand, serving, like I said before, even the ability, ability to serve, it is coming from Him. The ability to serve, to worship, it is coming from Allah. But fighting against our ego, that is coming from our will that Allah has given. It's a limited will. It's not the same as the will of Allah or the will of the angels. It's a limited will. And when He sees us using our will in submission to His will, when those two wills, they come together, when that something that is limited, it enters into something that is unlimited, it becomes unlimited. That unlimited will does not change. That limited will changes. At that time, you in that ocean that you are entering, you will start understanding your Lord more. Because that fighting against your ego that makes you to understand your Lord and the majesty of your Lord and the power and the beauty of your Lord. You start understanding also the uh, majestic anger of your Lord. And you're going to understand how little you are, how a small, weak creature you are. So that is with us. That is given to our hands. And that, when it sees you, that you are, ego is driving you crazy. And shaitan is circling around you, they're seeing it. Other things are happening. And it sees, in spite of all of that, we are putting your head down. And you're asking for help. And you're not being stubborn. Says it's very easy. And it sees you. In that, after a certain time limit, it is given. Because so many of you are idiots anyway. All of us are. You need to be in 
that time limit to go crazy a little bit and say, okay, now you're waking up? You're still not waking up after that time limit. Oh, they say, increase it 100 times. Because that time limit, he knows that you just have to open the door and let us in. You're not opening the door. Send more hardship, hardness to that one. Send more so that he becomes completely now enemy even to his own self. The stubbornness. Say, no. Are you sure? Do you understand who you're declaring war against? I don't care. Now you don't care because you're not feeling it. Because nothing is touching you now. But you're going to care later when it's going to touch you. It's going to touch you, things, people that you love. Then you have the power in your hand to stop it. But you are not. You're thinking by standing up, Allah is going to change. Mercy, where is that mercy? That mercy is coming through reminding you, stop this. That mercy, that despite all the disobedience that is happening, still nothing is touching you. Nothing. But still you're not understanding that? Then through your own disobedience, you're going to block out that mercy and you're going to be left with your own fire that you have kindled from inside of yourself. It is saying, sit down, pray. The believers, they are the protectors of the unbelievers. The saints are the ones who protect the believers. The prophets are the ones who protect the saints. And all those who commit wrong actions disobedience, they are protected by those who commit all the right actions. That if it's not because of those ones, Allah would punish all those ones who have committed the wrong actions in the blink of an eye to non-existence. Which part we're looking at? Look at the last part. How we're being disobedient and how we want to be obedient. That time you come out from yourself. You're not going to look at things only because of your own experience and your own feelings. You're going to look at the state of this whole world, the existence that has happened before and what is going to come later. That whatever good that we are doing, that there are people in our generations who are going to be blessed by that. They're going to feel the mercy of Allah from that. So if any doesn't say the next part, because he's merciful and he covers it. Do you understand? Just as you're saying so many people, oh, they're getting very emotional to pray in Masjid al-Aqsa so much, thousand times. Uh, reward you're going to get to pray in Masjid al-Nabawi, you're going to get this much to pray in Haram 
Haram is if you're going to get this much. But the same is also true. If you commit even a small mistake in these holy places, you're going to get punished a lot. We have done so much wrong to these three holy places for such a long time. Uh, as Sultan Abdul Hamid Khan said, if the Ottomans they were to withdraw from Kudus, from Jerusalem, rivers of blood will not stop until Judgment Day. It hasn't stopped. Nothing can bring it together. Nothing. People are not interested in peace. They don't want to bring peace and stability in there. It's all that lies that all these politicians they are saying including the Muslim politicians also. Nobody wants peace. Even if they do and they bring everyone to come together, you will not find peace there. Never. Until Hazrat Mahdi salam appears. And he is going to take people. He is saying, good, you have been training. Waiting for me and you were in training. You are not sitting in illusion and delusion. You are not sitting and just going around enjoying yourself. You are not just sitting down and just to be busy with your own ego. You were training. You are fighting with yourself. You are fighting with what is haq and what is battle. You are ready now. You are not going to get full. This is what we are doing. How much you're going to fight every day? That is your worth. We are soldiers. Fighting against your own nafs. Never forget that. In your work that you are doing. In your families that you are enjoying. Never forget that. Never give that up. Our worth of a soldier is only come when it comes to fighting. You can have all the skills, but you are not using that. It's worthless. Worthless. When the enemy is coming, you have all the skills, you know what, but you are not fighting, it's worthless. Zero. You understand? May Allah forgive me. Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This much is enough. I'll see you tomorrow. Al Fatiha.